Do you think we'll have a future with something you call uh, afterlife? We'll have avatars that mimic increasingly better and better our behavior, our appearance, all that kind of stuff. Even those are perhaps not no longer with us. Yes, I mean we need some information about about them. I mean, I think about my father. I have what he wrote. Now he didn't have a word processor, so he didn't actually write that much. And our memories of him aren't perfect. So how do you even know if you've created something that's satisfactory? Now you could do a Frederick Kurzweil Turing test. He seems like Frederick Kurzweil to me. But the people who remember him, like me, don't have a perfect memory. Is there such a thing as a perfect memory? Maybe the whole point is for him to make you feel a certain way. Yeah, well, I think that would be the goal. And that's the connection we have with loved ones. It's not really based on very strict definition of truth. It's more about the experiences we share. Yeah. And they get yeah. morphed through memory, but ultimately they make us smile. I think we we definitely can do that. And that would be very worthwhile. So do you think we'll have a world of replicants, of copies? Would there be a bunch of Ray Kurzweil's? Like I could hang out with one. I can download it for five bucks and have a best friend, Ray. And uh, you, the original copy, wouldn't even know about it. Um, is, that, is that, do you think that world is, um, first of all, do you think that world is feasible? And do you think there's ethical challenges there? Like, how would you feel about me hanging out with Ray Kurzweil and you not knowing about it? Uh, doesn't strike uh, me as a problem. <laughs> Um, which, which you, <laughs> the original? Would, would you strike? Would that cause a problem for you? Or no, I, I enjoy. I would really very much enjoy it. No, not just hang out with me, but if somebody hang out with you, a, a replicant of you. Well, I think I would start. It sounds exciting, but then, what if they uh, start doing better than me, and and take take over my friend group, and then and then I. Because, because they may be um, an imperfect copy, or they may be more social, all these kinds of things, and then I become like the old version that's not not nearly as exciting. Maybe they're a copy of the best version of me on a good day. Yeah, but if you hang out with a replicant of me, and that turned out to be successful, I'd I'd feel proud of that person because it was based on me. So. <laughs> So it's, it, but it is a kind of death of this version of you. Well, not necessarily. I mean, you, you can still be alive, right? But, and you would be proud. Okay, so it's like having kids and you're proud that they've done even more than you were able to do. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> uh, it does bring up new issues, but uh, it seems like an opportunity. Well, that that replicant should probably have the same rights as you do. Well, that that gets into a whole issue uh, because when a replicant occurs, they're not necessarily going to have your rights. And if a replicant occurs to somebody who's already dead, do they have all the obligations and that the original person had? Do they have all the agreements that they had? And, uh, so, I think you're going to have to have laws that say yes. There has to be if you want to create a replicant, they have to have all the same rights as human rights. Well, you you don't know. Someone can create a replicant and say, "Well, it's a replicant, but I didn't bother getting their rights," and so. Yeah, but that would be illegal. I mean, like if you do that, you have to do that in the black market. You have to if you want to get an official replicant. Okay, it's, gonna, not, it's not so easy. Suppose you create multiple replicants. Uh, the original rights uh, may be for one person and not for a whole group of per people. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so there has to be at least one, and then all the other ones kind of share the rights. 
Yeah, I, I just don't. I don't think that that's very difficult to conceive for us humans. The the the, the idea I that mean, this we don't, country... you can create a replicant that has certain. I mean, I've talked to people about this, including my wife, who would l like to get back her father, um, and she doesn't worry about who has rights to what. She she would have somebody that she could visit with and might give her some satisfaction. Uh, and they wouldn't, she wouldn't care about any, any of these other rights. What does your wife think about multiple array cores walls? Have you had that discussion? I haven't addressed that with her. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think ultimately that's an important question, loved ones, how they feel about, there's, a, there's something about love. Well, that's and, the key thing, right? If, if the loved one's rejected, it's not gonna work very well. So. So the, the loved ones really are the key determinant whether or not this works or not. But there's also ethical rules. Um, we have to contend with the idea, and we have to contend with that idea with AI. But, but what's going to motivate it is, I mean, I talk to people who really miss yeah. people who are gone, and they would love to get something back, even if it isn't perfect. Uh, and that's what's going to motivate this. And that person lives on in some form. And as, the more data we have, the more we're able to reconstruct that person and allow them right. to live on. Right. And uh, eventually, as we go forward, we're going to have more and more of this data because we're going to have nanobots that are inside our neocortex, and we're going to collect a lot of data. In fact, anything that's data is, is always collected. There is something a little bit sad, which is becoming, or maybe it's hopeful, which is more and more common these days, which when a person passes away, you have their Twitter account, you know, and you have the last tweet they tweeted, like something they- And you can recreate them now with large language models and so on. I mean, you can create somebody that's just like them and can actually continue to uh, communicate. I think that's really exciting because I think in some sense, like if I were to die today, in some sense I would continue on if I continued tweeting. I tweet, therefore I am. Yeah, well, <laughs> in I, some I, sense. I mean, that's one of the advantages of a replicant that they can recreate the communications of that that person.